What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with our sides check video for students. If you're a teacher, we have a teacher resource. This is for students, but you're all welcome to watch it. So let's dive in and see what we mean by sides check. Any time in life you come across a problem, right? You have to have some sort of strategy or some sort of steps to follow to get the solution, okay? And this could be any type of problem in real life. And typically what you do is you're going to begin with the end in mind. So a couple weeks ago, I took my car into the uh, garage and they're gonna charge me $250 to change my own spark plugs, right? They called it a tune-up and I was like, that's ridiculous. I think I can do this by myself. So that was my problem. I had to begin with that end in mind. I needed to start with what I wanted to accomplish. I wanted to change my spark plugs. From there, I had to identify the information that I needed, right? And that's kind of in this step right here. Now we've begun with the problem. We know what we want in the end, and we start to identify information that's going to help us. What that looked like to me in that moment is, I got on YouTube and I started looking up a lot of different videos on how to change spark plugs until I found one of somebody changing the spark plugs in a car just like mine. After that, I began to develop a plan. So I used that information that I identified in the video and I began to develop a plan in my head of what I needed to do. I had to get some tools. I had to go to a friend's house who had the right car tools for me to use. And that started to formulate of how I was going to solve my problem. Once I had that plan, I needed to execute it, right? Okay, so I have the plan. Just because it's in my head doesn't mean it's going to help me unless I actually do something about it. And in that step, you have to learn from failure, right? We failed. It took us two hours to change spark plugs in the car. But I guarantee you if I did it again, I could do it in half of an hour, right? Because I've learned from my failure. I know what I can and cannot do, what I should and should not do. And when I executed that plan, when I learned from that failure, that led to a solution, right? I was able to change my spark plugs at a fraction of the cost that the garage was going to charge me. When I look at this problem solving strategy that we just talked about, I see it everywhere. Okay, my son, he's three years old. He loves to watch the show Chico Bon Bon, right? Monkey with a tool belt. In every show, there's a problem, okay? And they call up Chico Bon Bon on his banana phone and he's like, all right, I got you, right? I just watch one, it was about a refrigerator that became a robot, okay? Well, they knew what they needed to do. They needed to turn the robot back into a refrigerator. They had to identify the information. They had to learn about the refrigerator. They had to learn what tools would work and what tools wouldn't. They develop a plan. They try to execute it, typically because it's a 20-minute show. You can't just you know solve it right the first time. So they fail. They learn from it. He takes a bite from a banana, and then all of a sudden a better plan pops in his head. They execute it, and then they solve the problem. So in this case, they turn the robot back into a fridge. It doesn't matter if it's my three-year-old, doesn't matter if it's a Netflix show, doesn't matter if it's a monkey with a tool belt, or if it's me trying to uh, change my spark plugs. This thought process is how we can solve problems efficiently and come to the solution that we need. So at this point, a lot of you guys are saying, okay, Mr. Instructor Beat Student, how does that relate to math? This is a math video, not a um, car mechanic video, not a Netflix show video, right? This is a math video. So we came up with this sides check for those exact reasons. And our first step is to write a statement. And we're gonna demonstrate this in a couple examples next, but we just wanna make sure this is in your notes. Um, so go ahead and write it down. We have a link to guided notes in the description of our video. The statement helps us begin with the end in mind. So we're doing the same process, we're just naming it a little bit differently for math. Then we wanna go into the word problem. We want to identify key information that's going to help us. I had to Google how to change spark plugs. You are going to go into a word problem and identify the words and the numbers that are going to help you figure out what to do. At that point, you need to develop a plan or draw a picture. Okay, I love tape diagrams or bar models. Some teachers teach something different, but as long as you're developing a plan, and then we're going to execute it. But in math, we call that an equation, okay? We're gonna have an equation that we need to execute, and when we execute that equation, it's going to lead us to solve the math problem. And then once we have that solution, once we've solved it, we're going to check it to make sure it makes sense. So this is what that same thought process looks like in math. Here's the key thing about sides check. This is not just steps for you to go through. It's a thought process that if you take this and internalize it can help you in any situation 
throughout your whole life, okay? It's the same exact thought process we just talked about of what Chico Bonbon used to turn the refrigerator robot back into a refrigerator. Begin with the end in mind. Write a statement. Identify important information. Go back into the word problem. Look at what's important. Develop a plan so you can execute it or write that equation to solve it. And then we want to check it, right, just to make sure that our answer is correct. So let's take this thought process and take it to a word problem. Now, we're going to start with a third grade problem, then we're going to do a fourth grade problem, we're going to do a fifth grade problem. But no matter what grade you're in, you have to be able to understand the thought process. And yeah, you might be able to look at this third grade problem and know the answer right away, but that's not the point. You want to internalize and practice the process, right? Because as you get older, questions and problems become more complicated. If my son is trying to fit all the toys into the toy box, or if I'm trying to fix a leaky toilet... <laughs> we are still going to begin with the end in mind and follow that same process. So you have to be able to do it on easy questions for you then to know what to do on more challenging questions. So over here, I like to write down my thought process of sides check, okay? And I just like to cross it as I go. So my question says, how much money did she start with? So my statement is gonna say, she started with blank dollars. So just in my statement, I begin with the end in mind. I'm going to be done when I figure out how much money she started with. That's the problem I'm trying to solve. My statement tells me I need to go back and identify anything about money, right? And if, if it's something about money, probably how much she had or how much she bought, right? So it's helping me know what to identify. Just like when I figured out I wanted to change my spark plugs, that helped me know, okay, I need to go find out information about spark plugs. The statement leads us into the identify. So Summer bought a shirt for $23 and a sweater for $38. I'm circling these not because they're numbers, because that's what my statement's about. Then she had $14 left. Okay, so she bought two things. She had some money left over in her pocket. You want to know how much money she started with. All right, so now I know that I'm either adding or subtracting, but whatever I'm doing... For me, I'm going to develop a part whole model. So the develop a plan could be different for whatever your teacher wants you to do. But I teach tape diagrams. This is just a way to develop a plan. It's not a part of sides check, but it's just a way to develop the plan. So I'm going to draw a part whole model. I know she bought a shirt. There we go. For $23. Let me do 23 right here. I know she bought a sweater for $38. So 38 needs to be bigger. Oh, I'm just going to label sweat there. Okay, so the 30 is bigger than 23. And then she had $14 left in her pocket. Oh, I need to know, okay, how much did she begin with? So I need to add up all of that to figure out how much she started with. So now I've developed my plan. I need to execute it, right? I need to write my equation. So I'm going to be doing 23 plus 38 plus 14. And that's going to tell me what she started with. Okay, you can use an X for a variable, whatever you want to do. You could use a, um, a blank underline, that's fine. So I just need to solve this now. And when I combine all those, I get $75. So I'm going to say she started with $75. Now I just want to check it. I want to make sure it makes sense. If I start with $75, could I buy a shirt for $23? Yes. Could I buy a sweater for $38? Yes. And $14 would make sense. I might have it left. So now I've checked it. And I know that's my solution. So that's a third grade problem. Let's take it to the next level. Let's do a fourth grade problem. Okay, so this is a word problem. So I'm going to uh, do my sides check over here. All right. And so my question says, how much money did they spend all together? So my statement's going to say, they spent blank dollars all together. That's my statement. I'm going to go identify anything about money and then anything about they, right? If they means it's more than one person. So Tiff and Tracy were going to a concert at PNC Music Pavilion located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Tiff bought $120 worth of merch, okay, merchandise. So that's about money, I'm gonna identify it. Oh, here's a key word here. That is three times more than Tracy. This right here tells me I am doing multiplication comparison. And then how much money did they spend all together? So I'm gonna put a plus sign here. So now I've identified a couple different things, but I know what tape diagram I'm going to draw because it's multipl multiplication comparison. I'm going to draw a multiplicative comparison tape diagram. So I need to develop my plan here. Okay, so first I know that I'm comparing Tiff and uh, Tracy. There we go. Oh, just a Y. 
And I know that that, that meaning the sentence before, is three times more than Tracy. So Tiff bought three times more than what Tracy bought. Okay, so I'm going to do my multiplicative comparison model. Again, if you don't know about tape diagrams, uh, you can check out our videos. We have a whole playlist on how to teach them um, and what they are and for students to learn how to do them. Uh, this is not part of size check. Again, you could develop your plan any other way you want, uh, but this is what I teach. So I'm going to stick with it. I also know that Tiff bought 120. Okay, so right there I put 120 because that's how much she bought. And I want to know how much they had all together. So at the end of this, I'm going to add up Tiff and Tracy. So now I've developed my plan, I know because I do tape diagrams, what I need to do. I need to figure out how much each of these equal pieces are, and then I need to add them, right? So I've developed my plan, now I just need to execute it. So I know I have 120 split into three equal groups, and that's going to be 40 for each of those. And then I know if this is 40, then this equal group down here has to be 40. So to add them all together, Tracy had 40 total. If I add 120 plus 40, I know that all together they spent $160. So I've executed, I, I wrote my equation. Oops, sorry, I didn't write my equation. I did um, three times 40 plus another group of 40. You could also just say four times 40 and you got an answer of 160. So I wrote my equation, I executed it, I solved it, okay? And I checked it to make sure it makes sense. If Tiff bought 120, and then Tracy bought 40. Okay, that makes sense that that would be 160. So that's a little bit more difficult uh, problem, but if you notice, the thought process was the same. I did my statement, helped me identify my information, which helped me develop the plan I want to use to write my equation and execute and solve that, and then I had to check it. So here's what we want you to take with you, okay? You have to practice a strategy for easy questions so that when you have a hard question, you have a process to solve it. I know a lot of students love to say, Oh, the answer is nine. I don't need a problem solving strategy. I don't need to show my work. Well, that's great. But you have to be able to crawl before you can walk and you have to be able to walk before you can run. Somebody famous, I think, once said that. Maybe Martin Luther King Jr. A wise man was he. So you have to be able to take this thought process and use it on an easy problem to practice it no matter how easy the problem is. So that way, when you get to a harder problem, you know the process, you know the steps. Now you can follow them and worry about doing the math correctly. Okay, so please take that thought with you. Make your teachers' lives easier. Make your lives easier because this will help you no matter what type of problem you are facing. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different options on YouTube and social media and all of those things. We appreciate you. If you haven't yet, please check out our Sides Check song. You can um, check it out in the end cards right here. All right. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Please subscribe, like the video, turn your notification bell on so you can see all our other songs and lessons and videos coming out. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.